Hello and welcome to CineTracer 2.0. This has been a project I've been working on for quite a while and we are officially in Unreal Engine 5. Now, a couple notes before we get into the demo and a little bit of the walkthrough and tutorial. One, this is a full recreation, remake of CineTracer reimagined in Unreal Engine 5. It's not a port. So we didn't just take CineTracer 1 and bring it into CineTracer 2. Everything here is made from scratch in the way that works best with the new Unreal Engine 5 control rig, lighting systems, stuff like that, development stuff. This is a completely different version. But what hopefully has happened on Steam, this is new. I like just set it up this way and hopefully it's working, uh, is that if you own CineTracer 1, Steam should just give you CineTracer 2 for free. That is the goal with that. It is technically a different game though. So hopefully when you go onto Steam, you see CineTracer and CineTracer 2. You can also just purchase CineTracer 2, but if you want both, this is just currently how it is. You could buy CineTracer 1. So that's kind of confusing, but hopefully that CineTracer 1 users get CineTracer 2 to start to play with. And I say play with because again, this is made from scratch. And so this is very raw. There's not much. There are three levels. That's them, and the inventory is very small, and it's a very new, fresh start, so it's probably not production ready for most people who are using the original version. But let's walk up into our little hub room. This is where you should be starting. And we have two maps. One of them is a gas station. You would get to it by talking to the camera case here. Another one, a psych wall, but let's start with the tutorial system here. That thing's dancing up and down. It's kind of funny. I'm gonna walk up to it and hit F. So here we are loaded into a soundstage, and this is the very first tutorial system for CineTracer. I hope to create tutorials that teach the new systems as I create them and hopefully teach fun, uh, filmmaking fundamentals with lighting and cameras as well. This is the first one, very raw work in progress. Um, so I'd love to know feedback overall. And I'm gonna walk you painstakingly slow through it because CineTracer 2 is very different than 1. It may look kind of similar, but you may notice that it is first person. CineTracer 2 is first person and so there's some new mechanics with that. So the first goal here, the first step is to operate the camera. How does operating cameras work? It's pretty similar to CineTracer 1. We're going to walk up to the camera and we're going to point at it, aim at it, and we're going to hit F. We are now this camera. If you use WASDA, uh, you can turn around you can steer and drive this dolly. Now, not all cameras are going to be this slow and wheeled vehicles, but this very first one, it's both of those things. We're also pretty much fully controller supported, and I'll cover that at the end, but we've rolled into this little blue marker here, and it's fairly forgiving. So anywhere near here, we're going to get a goal completed, and we actually have to exit to get out of this. So we're going to hit R, and I've exited. Now, I know the instructions are a little wordy, still working on it, um, but the next goal is to set the ND filter, just as ND, to 0.9. So to do that, we're going to walk up to the camera, hit F, and we're going to hit F again, camera view. So it's very bright. And you'll see at the bottom are the inputs to change which uh, parameter we're going to edit. We're going to choose ND, and I'm going to hit F. Then I'm going to use Q and E again to change the value to 0.9, and we have uh, completed the goal. There's a lot more camera controls to cover, but probably one of the most important ones is that if you left click and there's something to focus on, it will try to autofocus it. Um, very small fonts or instructions that space and shift are booming like this. And sneaky, I'm going to just head over here and change the format to anamorphic because we have an anamorphic mode now, and there's going to be different variations of it, but um, just for fun, adding this in here. And I'm going to hit R to get back, R to exit. We're back in this familiar mode, and then we're going to hit R once again to fully exit. So that is driving the camera, getting in, changing some settings, and then getting out. It's a bit different uh, than the live game. The next thing says to set up a light stand, and we have one conveniently placed right here. You're going to need to find the blue marker. I hope that's somewhat obvious. We're going to hover it and left click to pick it up. If you're playing on controller, it should tell you what to do there as well. And we're going to hit Q and E to rotate this. So I'm moving the mouse and then Q and E. We're just going to try to line it up and that's close enough. Left click to drop it. So that's how we move objects. 
Next is to pick up that light and to put it on the light stand attaching things. Um, hopefully this is a lot more straightforward than the live game. We're going to left click to pick it up. And then we're going to just hover over the light stand and then left click to attach it. Uh, there's a bunch more mechanics like that that this tutorial doesn't cover, but I will show them in the future. The next thing is to turn on this light. Uh, right now, it's not on. It's not actually putting out light. We're going to walk up to it and hit F to edit it. We're going to hit F again to go into the modifier gallery. And we'll see that there are three choices here. And we're going to go with just like the regular diffusion panel for now. That's what it wants. Go completed. Feel free to play with the other ones later. We're going to exit with R, exit again. That's how we turn lights on. Uh, that little locator does have its shadow still. It probably shouldn't, but it's kind of a cool effect, I guess. Uh, next, we're going to raise the light stand, hit F, and we can move while we're editing this light stand. And we're going to hit F again to confirm that we're going to edit the height and then go up to 50%, something like this, and then exit, exit. Lastly here, we're going to edit it again. The light stand did disappear for a second, but it, it'll come back. We're going to go to light parameters and we're going to change the tilt to about negative 15. It likes it like this. Exit all the way out. So that's how we're going to move things around generally, pick up lights, attach them to light stands, and then turn on the lights. The lights have modifiers now. And the lighting system in general is going to be a, a lot more complicated. Hopefully not too hard to deal with, like interact with, but there's a lot more um, modifiers and grip equipment that's going to be coming. Uh, and this is the interface for it for now. So another new concept here is that we're going to go turn off the house lights. You'll see that there are these square lights in the room placed by me. And they're working just as house lights. But if we want to light this scene from scratch, we actually have to turn them off. So we're going to turn around, go to the light switch, hit F. It will take a second for them to fade out. But those are now off. And the scene is now only being lit by our lights and the kind of noisy Christmas lights in the background. So the last part of the tutorial here is we're going to walk up to the camera. We want to create a shot and we're going to go F to go in the camera again and feel free to use your mouse to pan around like this. You can keep driving around on the dolly. It's a little funny driving it around while you're through the camera. It kind of makes me motion sick, but um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and her hitbox is only on her body for now. The metahumans will act differently with focus later. And this is very important. This is like the most important part of the system here is that we're going to hit enter to create a shot. It's something on controller. I forget it would tell you. And we have created that shot. And now these screenshots, as you create them, should be located in your my documents slash Cinetracer folder. If you're on the Mac, this might have brought up a dialogue that says, do you want to give Cinetracer permission to write to my documents? Unfortunately, without your mouse on, you may not be able to get to it. So you might actually have to quit the program to give her permission. I'm working on a way to get that permission done while you have your mouse. But currently, um, it's a bit of an issue right now on macOS. Uh, there's more to talk about with macOS as well, probably in a different video. But we have completed this goal. We're going to exit, exit, and we have completed the tutorial. So hopefully that gets us through like the basics on how to operate a camera. How do we change some of the settings? How do we do some lights? And there's a lot more systems that these tutorials will hopefully cover. Uh, at the moment, it says you could go to the GoToHub. That's actually not true. So we're going to... Oh, I forgot to turn on my headlamp. I forgot my own tutorial step. If you hit C, we have our little flashlight in the dark here. I should have done that. But over here, this is the same portal back. And if we hit F, we are back in the rental house. So compared to Cinetracer 1, it's somewhat similar but overall a, a different workflow but let's look at the storyboarding system and the updates to shot listing and how that's going to work for people who are using this for storyboarding for production and before we head over to one of these maps here i want to point us at this little uh thing on the wall here this is one of the biggest difference with Cinetracer 2 from Cinetracer 1 and i tried to make it as succinct as possible and i'll cover exactly what this means this says a scene is saved by creating a shot. We did make a shot in the tutorial and a shot comes from a camera. A project overall saves all of the created shots. So we'll go see what that means. But basically, if you just go out into one of the creative worlds and throw some stuff out there and then save the project, which I'll show you where that is, 
you won't actually save anything if you haven't taken a shot from a camera. The entire system now is driven by taking shots and creating storyboards. And I think it's a lot better for creating um, storyboards with lots and lots of scenes and variations. However, this is very different than the current Cinetracer. So let's head over to the gas station. If we go to the psych wall, it's actually exactly the same as what we did in the tutorial. So it's just an empty map. So we're gonna head over to the gas station. So if we wanna get into the inventory system um, or any of the settings, you can hit escape or you can hit tab. And that's how you get in and out of those. I didn't write that as an instruction, um, but that is where it is. Uh, you may have had to wrestle with this a little bit to get your user settings uh, set up over here. Uh, check these out here. And uh, what we're gonna look at here is the inventory system. So again, Cinetracer 2, and this version, extremely new. There's not much in it. However, I have made a lot of assets for UE5 that are ready to go in now that the framework is written. Let's start with a metahuman here. So we're going to use WASD to kind of 2D navigate around this one. Going to hit enter, and it's going to spawn in our metahuman. So just like all the other objects, we're going to walk up to it. Uh, its hitbox is kind of in a funny place, to be honest. Um... I think there's some issues going on there. We're going to work on it. Anyway, we're going to left click to pick him up and then we can move him around wherever. I am going to put him here using Q and E and something like that. Now, if we want to edit the metahumans, again, they're very limited compared to the live metahumans, except they have a lot more hair. That's something they have, but they don't have many clothing options yet. Those will come uh, in the near future. So we can use uh, A and D to switch through the different hair options and there's a lot there's a lot more than there used to be uh, and we're going to go with the uh, pixie haircut here and if you're on pc especially the facial hair should look pretty good uh, this has been a request for a while so to add the metahuman facial hair and did it on this version uh, on mac os hair is a little funny looking and not all the grooms are available so that you'll kind of pick a groom and it may not show up some are not working on the Mac just yet. Uh, that may come in the future, or I might just like take the ones out that don't work for the Mac. We can change the hair color. I'm going to make it just dark for now. And there will be more hair color options in the future. Clothing looks a little bit different. I'm trying to make this faster. There's going to be presets. Um, you can change what shirt you're doing here. And we can change the colors. There will be more materials and whatnot. This is just to get the system up and running. And we're just going to be able to quickly flip through the clothing like this. And these are the poses for now. This is not the final posing system, but I wanted to have just a couple variations available uh, for this first demo. So that's really quickly looking at metahumans. There's going to be a lot more to do uh, with them. And so we're going to hit tab and we're going to navigate to our dolly, hit enter, and it's going to spawn it out there. Just kind of floating, kind of, kind of interesting. We'll take control of it and it plops to the earth. So you do have to navigate and wrestle with this uh, rear driven Fisher dolly. Uh, sorry, not so sorry. It's a physics vehicle now. Um, there will be more traditional floating cameras like uh, we're probably used to as well uh, in the future. I'm going to hit F to go inside and you may notice that it is extremely bright. Um, so the first thing we have to do, which is why it's in the tutorial, is bring in the ND filters and you need to go like pretty far down because we're wide open at T14 at the moment. So I'll go to 1.8 switch over to iris and you'll see that the uh iris now comes in one tenth of a stop and i'll go something like this we're like a one four two split that's not something i say very often but that's where we're doing it and again for fun because we can i'm going to anamorphic mode and if we zoom in a bit kind of have to focus focus on this chest and come up here we can see that we actually have anamorphic focus so that's very fun focus a little soft you can manually focus it it's extremely slow though so you want to kind of get close with autofocus and then tune it in like that so that is creating uh almost creating a shot we've put a camera down we have put a metahuman in this scene so here's like the big difference so if we hit escape right and we go to system there's no save there's no load eventually i'm probably going to put that menu here but it's not there in this first release let me show you where this is actually located. So now we want to hit Q and E, and that's the time of day tool at the bottom. E again, that is the shot list tool. You can also scroll with the mouse wheel. Either one should work. And we're going to skip to the shot list tool. So this is a little odd, but this is how it's working so far. We're going to hit F. 
So we can still move and we see a couple buttons here. We say default project shot one of zero. There are no shots yet. Uh, so that's the tool we're going to look at. I'm going to go back to the hand tool. If things aren't working, go back to the hand tool. Not everything works in all the other tool modes. So now we're going to go into the camera, back in, and I'm going to hit enter to create a shot. We should see a little picture in picture to confirm that it happened. And then we can leave. So now I'll go back to the shot list tool, turn it on, and we see our one shot there. Pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to do... Uh, a little bit of a variation. I'm going to move him around like this. He turns around, and then we're going to immediately take another shot. So in the original system, Cinetracer 1, you would have to pretty much make a new project, or you would be kind of losing uh, a bit of work in between. But in Cinetracer 2, we can just keep adding shots over and over again in the same project. So this is the second shot of the scene. I'm going to hit Enter again and create a second shot. Get all the way out switch to the shot list tool, hit F, and now we have our second shot there shown here. So now, given that we can have these four options, if we do previous shot, we can go to shot one of two, and we'll see that the whole world gets saved when you do that and gets put back. So we do next shot, that is our second shot. You can keep going, just keep adding shots. You can't delete them yet, you can't reorder them, you can just keep making them though. And these screenshots will be in your My Documents folder. Now, if you were to leave right now and come back, you would not have saved this project. This is what saving looks like for now. What we're doing is saving the shot lists. We're saving all of those shots uh, right now to your computer. So we're going to go to Save Shot List. We need to give it a name. You could call it Default Project if you want. I would also recommend at the moment naming it Gas Station something because we don't actually... We don't parse the saves yet by map, so it might be helpful, but anyway, we'll call it gas station scene one. Actually, I don't know how the underscore is going to go. We'll find out. So we didn't save it yet. Now we're going to save. So that has been saved. So to show how to load it back in, I'm going to go back to the hand tool. Things only kind of work in the hand tool. We'll go back to the rental house. Now, don't do this. You could if you wanted to. You can actually load it here. You could load that in any map, but I would suggest for now loading it in the map that you created in. Eventually that won't be possible, but we're going to go back to the gas station. Where'd my scene go? How do I get it back? We're going to go here. We're going to go to load shot list and we have our one scene. If you wanted to pick another one, it's these kind of interesting UI so far that I've created here, but we are on gas station scene one and we're going to hit enter and load that project in and everything should be back. And we're going to Go to our second shot, our third shot. And so what we can do from here is just keep changing things. If we liked how this one was going, I'm going to have him just be there. And I just want to add one more shot to show how this is going. I'm backing up and we're making a kind of similar shot as before. I'm going to zoom out even wider, the, the ultra wide shot. And we're adding a third shot. So, so far we just keep adding shots to the end. That's how the system works for now. And we go to our shot list, and there it is, our third shot. But we can still recall the second, the first, and we just keep adding. So you should be able to make much more um, numerous shots, right, with lots of different changes. This will save the time of day. Um, there's a lot of features to show about the map. I'm going to show that in a different video. But this is the first look at um, Cinetracer 2 with the tutorial mode, the first person mode. And generally, if you did want to kind of start making projects with it, um, though the save files may get kind of messed up a lot in the beginning because a lot is changing. We're creating it as we go. Uh, this is how you create shots and create lots of them and then just cycle through them. Just make sure that you are in here, give it a project name, and then actually hit save every time to save all of the shots. So that wraps it up for this first look. Uh, let me know if you actually got it granted to you on Steam. It's a new mechanic to have Steam give two apps for one, basically. And let me know how it's running. This is UE5. So like you need to be probably having like the most up-to-date, you know, graphics card drivers, Windows. Like it's going to require a lot of things. This is like cutting edge 5.2 on Real Engine 5. And on the Mac side of things, it should be running fairly well. Um, we have Mac Universal now. So we actually have a native Apple Silicon port of this is what you should be playing. And I haven't tested it on an Intel Mac, but it probably works okay there as well. Uh, generally on the Mac, not that many people have probably made it this far in the video, but 
generally on the Mac, even on my M2 that I'm testing with, when you're changing video settings or anything like that, if it just stalls for a second, just give it time. Um, this is a lot. We give this is a lot of graphic stuff for the Max, um, especially like, like the lower uh, powered ones. So just give it time. It should load up. If you're changing settings and it's like taking a second, just just wait. You know, check check your email. It should come online. Uh, for the Windows computers, uh, you should be able to crank pretty hard. Uh, so that wraps up for this video, and I'll keep making updates to Cinetracer 2 and reporting back on this channel. And there's a couple other features about uh, the cu current, like first demo demo version of it that's out right now that needs to get explained as well. And I'll probably make videos about those too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.